in this video we will see what is so great about Gibbs energy. Of course when we have derived it from the combined expression of first and second law through Legendre transformation, we have seen that it has pressure and temperature as the natural variables. It is extremely convenient for practical purposes. That is one great thing about Gibbs energy. Now let's start from this step of the same derivation. We can write dg is equal to dh minus tds minus sdt. Now consider constant temperature scenario, also called as isothermal condition. dg is equal to dh minus tds. This is one of the most widely used expressions to calculate Gibbs energy change. Now, according to second law, the entropy change of the universe or the total entropy change of the system plus surrounding is greater than zero in a natural process and equal to zero in a reversible process. Total entropy change for a process cannot be negative. Note that it doesn't say that entropy change cannot be negative for the system alone or for the surrounding alone. It only says that the total entropy change cannot be negative. For a natural process, we can write ds total is equal to ds system plus ds surrounding which is greater than zero. Let's say in this process heat q irreversible is transferred from the surrounding to the system. ds system is greater than del q irreversible divided by t. The surrounding can be considered as a large reservoir. So the heat q irreversible is removed from the surrounding in a reversible manner. So ds surrounding is equal to minus del q irreversible divided by t. Now for the system we can rearrange the equation like this. ds system minus del q irreversible divided by t is greater than 0. We have derived in the video on enthalpy that at constant pressure del q is the enthalpy change. Therefore at constant pressure we can write ds system minus dh system divided by t is greater than 0 we get a TDS system minus DH system is greater than 0. Or we can write DH system minus TDS system is less than 0. Now we got the same expression that we derived for Gibbs energy through Legendre transformation. DH minus TDS. Here we have done it only with DH system and DS system. Therefore it is only DG of the system. And that must be less than zero for a natural process. Now we have got a criteria for the feasibility of a natural process which does not require calculation of any change in the surrounding. That is profound and extremely handy. In fact the change in the surrounding is quite elegantly accounted here. Look at this term. This dh system came from this term. It is essentially the dq irreversible divided by t term which is equal to the entropy change of the surrounding. So if we bother about the Gibbs energy change of the system, it automatically takes care of the change in the surrounding. So Gibbs energy change must be negative for a natural process to occur. For a reversible process, Gibbs energy change is equal to zero. Of course, you could have sensed by now that Gibbs energy is not a straightforward energy like enthalpy or internal energy. However, we can calculate the change in Gibbs energy value for a process and use it as a criteria to conclude about its feasibility. If the change in Gibbs energy value is positive, it can never happen. If it is zero, the process is already in equilibrium. If it is negative, the process will happen. That's the bedrock of thermodynamics in numerous applications. Now let's think about its consequences. If a natural process has to happen, the Gibbs energy change must be negative. Delta H system minus T delta S must be negative. So the balance between delta H and minus T delta S is the key. Let's consider two types of processes. In type 1, delta S is positive. In type 2, delta S is negative. Let's consider type 1 first. In type 1, delta S is positive, so minus T delta S term is negative. And if delta H is less than or equal to 0, 
then no problem the delta g will be negative and the process will happen but if delta h is positive and then its magnitude must not be higher than the magnitude of t delta s it's necessary otherwise delta g would be positive and the process cannot happen fine in the second type of processes the delta s is negative then minus t delta s is positive now in this case delta h must be negative and its magnitude must be higher than that of the t delta s term only then delta g will be negative now consider this type 2 again entropy change is negative what does it mean from statistical form of entropy it is a k natural log of w in the final state divided by that in the initial state for it to be less than 0 wf must be less than wi it's as if in joule expansion the gas contracts naturally of course in joule expansion the system does not exchange heat with the surrounding if in a process heat goes out of the system then reduction in entropy is possible in the system that is exothermic process formation of numerous compounds is exothermic in nature releasing heat and decreasing entropy of the system then enthalpy change is negative the released heat goes to the surrounding and increases the entropy of the surroundings to such an extent that the total entropy change is positive in fact it happens in numerous chemical reactions in biological organisms as well this is why life exists although exact measurements are far from complete we'll see about it in detail in the next video so the feasibility of every process including the process of life is down to a balance of enthalpy and entropy